All right, this is part 6b, talking about learning diversity and social economic status. In a previous video, we were looking at some of the data and statistics related to poverty and its effect on children's ability to learn. We were running out of time, so I stopped that, and I'm going to finish the end portion here, looking at the educational response. There's little a school or classroom can do to negate the effects of poverty, but there are four strategies that can be used to reduce these effects, and we'll just briefly look at these. Knowing that, big picture, spending a little money up front to ensure that all the children in our society are healthy and well-educated will save a great deal on the back end in money resources, pain, anguish in the form of expensive social programs, law enforcement, crime, and other costs and effects associated with poverty and crime. Spending a little money up front will save us a lot of time and waste and pain at the back end. Big picture. First of all, early intervention programs, number one, such as Head Start, Early Head Start, provide nutrition and early childhood education to preschool age children. They negate some of the effects of poverty and there is a body of research to support its efficiency, its efficacy, and its economic sense. We can begin to think of creating full service schools. Again, spending a little money up front saves lots of money. On the back end, integrated services include child and after school care, health care, tutoring and transportation uh, to uh, jobs and to school, job training for parents, and assistance with social services and employment. All right, proper nutrition and daycare out of school, plus quality instruction and remediation programs in school will make it more likely that students come to school ready and able to learn. And again, a little money up front will save us a lot of money on the back end. What teachers can do. Many children in poverty tend to move more often from school to school than other uh, students. Their learning experiences can be fragmented. As well, they tend to be absent more often. One thing a classroom teacher can do is to reduce this fragmentation by presenting material in smaller pieces and providing opportunities to practice or to reinforce each smaller bit. And we need to provide students with experiences that allow them to experience success. Provide higher levels of engagement, keep students actively engaged with experiences in which they can be successful, all right? This addresses self-esteem and self-concept issues, presents, prevents a sense of learned helplessness. And as well, this is kind of related to this, thinking about multiple intelligence theory and learning styles, we need to find a variety of ways for students to demonstrate their learning, not just test scores. We need to have less isolated skill and drill because that's often done outside of context and they cannot, they do not understand, no one understands things presented out of context, isolated drill and skill. This is often what happens, by the way, if students are need, in need of remediation, we find what they're not good at. We send them off to little rooms so they can drill and skill what they're not good at, so they can be not good at something to a greater degree. Doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, this is the end of part six, learner diversity based on social economic status.